morning, everybody. It's wonderful to see you all here, whether you're here in church with us or whether you're at home. But welcome, and it's grand because today is a very special day. It's the last Sunday of the old church year. Now, in days past, we've all known it as Stir Up Sunday, and sometimes. Sometime I'll tell you lots of stories about stirring Christmas pudding and about the dangers of stirring Christmas pudding in the wrong way. So there you are. But today, this is also the time when we remember the feast of Christ the King. So we recall the kingship of Christ. We give thanks for the kingship of Christ and our readings will reflect the great truth of Christ as Son of God, but as universal King of all throughout the world. We meet in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Peace be with you. We join in singing, well we join with the choir as they sing our first hymn. Nick and the choir, thank you very much. Often we think of Christ with his title of king and we think about the last judgment. At our celebration today, we intend to hear about Christ at the end of time. Yet the purpose of our gathering here is not to be fearful about what is to come, but rather to support one another in the tasks which we've got at hand. We remember Christ the Good Shepherd, the faithful shepherd, and this way when judgment time comes at the end of time, then we can be ready and rejoice over the good deeds that have built up God's kingdom. So we say together, Heavenly Father, all hearts are open to you. No secrets are hidden from you. Purify us with the fire of your Holy Spirit, that we may love and worship you faithfully, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Almighty God, you are gracious and compassionate. Lord, have mercy. You are loving to all, and your mercy is over all your creation. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. 
Your faithful servants bless your name and speak of the glory of your kingdom. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Jesus says, repent for the kingdom of heaven is close at hand. So let us turn away from sin and turn to Christ, confessing our sins in penitence and faith. Heavenly Father, we, we have sinned in thought, word, word, and, and deed, and, and have failed, failed to do what we ought to have done. We are so sorry and truly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, who died for us, forgive us all that has been past and lead us in his way, who walk as children of life. Amen. Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy on you and set you free from sin. Strengthen you in goodness and keep you in eternal life through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. The choir sings for us the Gloria. Let us pray. Eternal Father, whose Son Jesus Christ ascended to the throne of heaven, that he might rule over all things as Lord and King, keep the church in the unity of the Spirit and in the bond of peace, and bring the whole created order to worship at his feet. Grant this for the sake of your Son Jesus Christ, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. Amen. We continue with the readings. Second reading. The first reading is a reading from the prophet Ezekiel. The Lord says this, I am going to look after my flock myself and keep all of it in view as a shepherd keeps all his flock in view, when he stands in the middle of his scattered sheep, so that I shall see my sheep in view. I shall rescue them from whatever they have been scattered during the mist and the darkness. I myself will pasture my sheep. I myself will show them where to rest. It is the Lord who speaks. I shall look for the lost one, bring back the stray, Bandage the wounded and make the strong the weak strong. I shall watch over the fat and healthy. I shall be a true shepherd to them. As for you, my sheep, the Lord says this, 
I will judge between sheep and sheep, between rams and he goats. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be, be to, to God. God. The Lord is my shepherd, there is nothing I shall want. The Lord is my shepherd, there is nothing I shall want. The Lord is my shepherd, there is nothing I shall want. Fresh and green are the pastures where he gives me repose. Near restful waters he leads me to revive my drooping spirit. The Lord is my shepherd, there is nothing I shall want. He guides me along the right path, he is true to his name. You have prepared a banquet for me in the sight of my foes. The Lord is my shepherd, there is nothing I shall want. My head you have anointed white with oil, my cup is overflowing. Surely goodness and kindness shall follow me all the days of my life. The Lord is my shepherd, there is nothing I shall want. Surely goodness and kindness shall follow me all the days of my life. In the Lord's own house shall I dwell for ever and ever. The Lord is my shepherd, there is nothing I shall want. A reading from the first letter of St Paul's to the Corinthians. Christ has been raised from the dead, the first fruit of all who have fallen asleep. Death came through one man, and in the same way, the resurrection of the dead has come through one man. Just as all men die in Adam, so all men will be brought to life in Christ. But all of them in their proper order, Christ is the first fruits, and then after the coming of Christ, those who belong to him. After that will come the end, when he hands over the kingdom to God the Father, having done away with every sovereignty, authority and power. For he must be kind, king, until he has put all his enemies under his feet. And the last of the enemies to be destroyed is death. And when everything is subjected to him, then the son himself will be subject in his turn to the one who subjected all things to him. So the God may all be all in all. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. Alleluia, 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 Alleluia. Blessings on him who comes in the name of the Lord. Blessings on the coming kingdom of our father David. Alleluia. 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 Hear the Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Matthew. Son of man comes in his glory and all the angels with him 
He will sit on his glorious throne. All the nations will be gathered before him, and he will separate the people one from another as a shepherd separates the sheep from the goats. He will put the sheep on his right and the goats on his left. Then the king will say to those on his right, Come, you who are blessed by my father, take your inheritance, the kingdom prepared for you since the creation of the world. For I was hungry, and you gave me something to eat. I was thirsty, and you gave me something to drink. I was a stranger, and you invited me in. I needed clothes, and you clothed me. I was sick, and you looked after me. I was in prison, and you came to visit me. Then the righteous will answer him, Lord, when did we see you hungry and feed you, or thirsty and give you something to drink? When did we see you a stranger and invite you in, or needing clothes and clothe you? When did we see you sick or in prison and go to visit you? The king will reply, Truly I tell you, Whatever you did for one of the least of these brothers and sisters of mine, you did for me. Then he will say to those on his left, Depart from me, you who are cursed, into the eternal fire prepared for the devil and his angels. For I was hungry, and you gave me nothing to eat. I was thirsty, and you gave me nothing to drink. I was a stranger, and you did not invite me in. I needed clothes, and you did not clothe me. I was sick and in prison, and you did not look after me. They also will answer, Lord, when did we see you hungry, or thirsty, or a stranger, or needing clothes, or sick, or in prison, and did not help you? He will reply, Truly I tell you, whatever you did not do for one of the least of these, you did not do for... It's the Gospel of the Lord. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. This year's Gospel reading for the Feast of Christ the King is not an easy one to come to grips with because it continues, uh, it, it continues in fact within the Gospel of Matthew and it continues very much in mood from last Sunday. For we look in this Gospel to the end time um, and it will be the time when there will be a right wising of things and when the wicked will come and for them there will be, oh dear, um, the weeping and wailing and gnashing of teeth. That's the old translation and it's so wonderful that I, I can't, <laughs> well, yes, well there you are. So weeping and wailing and gnashing of teeth. But for me, a far more human picture of the kingship of Christ and the one that I always hold much closer to heart is the picture of Jesus, the entry in triumph into Jerusalem just days before his death on the hill of Calvary. So the picture for me of Christ the King is the picture of Christ entering into Jerusalem on that first Palm Sunday. The liturgy of the church is a wonderful thing. For every Palm Sunday, at the beginning of the Eucharist, we all go on a journey. For most of us, we start out at the church gates and we have the procession of palms and we have the, the, the Palm Sunday gospel and then we have the blessing of palms and then the procession into church while we all sing all glory, Lord and honour. And it's the same here and in, I suspect, nearly every church throughout the world. There is genius in the liturgy of the church and it's a teaching Jesus. It's a teaching genius because it takes us back over the centuries 
and we somehow not only recall, but we re-enact that strange time when for the only time in his earthly life, Jesus entered Jerusalem in triumph and was hailed as king. Liturgy is a living thing. It's full of pictures, it's full of actions, it's full of words. And every time we hear of the entry of Christ into Jerusalem, somehow we're back 2,000 years, somehow we're back in the year 32 or 33 in the city of Jerusalem. Somehow we can almost feel the heat and the dust and all around are the smells, the smells of the spices and the herbs of the sook in Jerusalem. But also we can smell the perfume almost of the bougainvillea blossom around the shaded courtyards. As we remember the entry of Christ into Jerusalem as king, the sun is nowhere near its height yet, but it's already burning hot and the light dazzles as you look. The Roman soldiers here in the Holy Land loathe it, but then they come from the gentle green slopes and landscapes of Italy. And of course, the locals loathe them because they're cruel, they are invaders, there is a mercilessness about the Roman war machine. Okay, so we're in Jerusalem in this particular bit of church liturgy. Look over eastwards, over the city wall, and let's pick up this procession as it goes. Look over to the Mount of Olives, and we see the strange little procession there making its way down the track through the olive groves. There's a man on a donkey surrounded by 12 of his closest friends. And those 12 look fearfully about them. Down by the city wall, as that little procession comes down from the Mount of Olives over the valley of the Kidron, we then see them coming to the gate, the ancient city gate. The crowds are waiting. They know something's afoot, and even if they don't know what is afoot, men and women, young and old, they're all gathering together. And so the procession climbs up, up that rope, rough slope from the valley floor, through the city gate, and onward up the road and towards the temple. And the crowds are shouting, Hosanna to the son of David, and some are pulling down palm branches to strew in the road. Others are throwing their cloaks down so that the man on the donkey can ride over. It's a strange procession, and it is a supremely ironic one, for the man is indeed on a donkey. It's not the great white or white-grey horse, the charger of a military leader. It's a donkey. It's a beast of burden. It is a beast such as we knew where we were until two years ago, where you would see faithful donkeys, oh, well looked after, but bearing great burdens of logs or grass across those rough slopes. There's another irony, too, because in the wild applause of the crowds, we see, I suspect, a deep fear in the eyes of the twelve who surround the man being hailed as king. He is being hailed as king, yes, but all around them are Roman soldiers. They don't know what's up, and they are deeply, deeply suspicious. So what's, it, what's happening? What's it all about? What do they all want? The man on the donkey is Jesus. The one so many saw and hailed as Messiah, particularly here where they're casting palm branches down and their own cloaks in front of him. And they're proclaiming him as king. King he is. 
but not as the crowds think he is king. Jesus wants to be seen as he is, and that is not as a military leader. The people want him as a military leader. They want him to be somebody who will be a hatchet man for the Jewish state. Jesus is actually making his way to the temple, as we know, to throw out those who have turned the court of Gentiles, a very holy place, and the only place where non-Jews could be, and yet it's been turned into a market. What do the crowds want? The crowds want, yes, a king, but they want a military hatchet man. They want a messiah on their terms. They want another Judas Maccabeus, but this time a successful Judas Maccabeus. For the last time there was a revolt, it ended up in a terrible state with the deaths of thousands, the revenge of a merciless Roman state. They don't see Jesus as he truly is. The crowd see Jesus as they want him to be. And that is a very dangerous thing. So the twelve, the twelve apostles, what do they want? I suspect above all else to know what on earth is going on and to know what the future holds. They trust Christ as Messiah, of course they do. They also know that he is not what the crowds want. And yet somehow they're all being driven along in the whirlwind of that day, onwards and up into the temple where Jesus drives out the money changers and the market sellers. The apostles must have feared for their lives for they could see the clash that was coming on the one hand, the Romans and the Roman soldiers, and on the other, the Jewish religious leaders. And between the two, like a vice in the middle, was Jesus and the apostles and those with them. So the 12 apostles, what do they want? They just want to know what the future holds. Okay, what about you and me? What do we want in the church? As we look at Christ, the universal King, what do we want? First and foremost, I suspect we want to see Jesus as the true King, not the military leader but the Lord and Master who actually rules and governs our hearts and our minds and who will lead us with him through the crucifixion and into life. Let's pull to the end. We now go back to that strange procession from the Mount of Olives and I offer you just a few thoughts. Hmm? Number one, the cheers of the crowd within days turned to screams of abuse. Hosanna in the highest. Hosanna to the son of David. They're shouting now. A few days time when Jesus is at the judgment place, they are shouting, crucify him. May you and I never be as fickle or as mindless as the crowd. Number two, they threw cloaks into the road. They tore down palm branches for Jesus to ride over. God help you and me to be realistic in what we look for and in what we do. Number three, Many were surprised to see this king not on a fine charger, not with a panoply of state, but on a donkey, the beast of burden, the beast that carries wood, that carries groceries, that carries great piles of grass and hay. May 
God help us to see real values in life, not the hype which is served up by so many to us in politics, in commerce, in every part of life. Lastly, as we, on this day, as we honour Christ the King, we remember that strange little royal procession of palms. But what we've got to do is to see this as the beginning of a single narrative. And that narrative moves onwards through the last week, through his judgment before Pilate, through crucifixion, and then into the joy and freedom of new life in resurrection. But look, let's belay that, belay that for a few months, because this is November, it's not the end of Lent. So may God help us to know not what we want, what we would like. It's not a wish list. The crowd had a wish list. They wanted a military leader, a great stick with which to beat the Romans. But may God help us to know what is truly best for us. And what is truly best for us is the truth of Christ, the King of all creation. What is truly wonderful out of all that is best for us is that the gift that he brings, the greatest gift of all, is the gift of eternal life. Amen. We say together the creed, we believe in one God, Let us pray for the church and for the world, and let us thank God for his goodness. Holy God, we raise before you your church here in Grangetown, of which your son is king. We pray that you will draw us together and unite us in the love of Christ, that we may proclaim with one voice your justice and righteousness in a broken world. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Loving God, we pray for your world of which your son is king. We pray for peace, reconciliation and healing in the places of war, hatred, terrorism and the COVID pandemic. We pray that the nations of this world may be united and subject to the rule of Christ the King, through whom and for whom all things were created. We pray for earthly monarchs, especially Elizabeth our Queen. May their rules be guided and influenced by the example set by your son, who lives and reigns as King of Kings. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Father God, we pray for our communities here in the Cardiff of which your son is King. We pray for the communities of our friends and families, our church and our places of work and study. 
Help us to know the people around us to be our brothers and sisters in Christ and to serve them as he would serve them. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Loving God, we pray for all who suffer, among whom your son is king. We pray that they will know the presence of your son alongside them and the power of Christ, the king, within them, bringing peace and healing to them and help and encouragement for those caring for them at this time of need. We pray for those who have been asked for our prayers. Ellery Francis, and from St. Paul's, Jane Pritchard, Ollie Meredith, Kathleen Phillips, Eileen Newbury, Gwyneth Day, Ken Bowen, Debbie, Anthony Lewis, David Nash, Frida Dight, uh, Peggy Murray, Robert Allen, and from St. Sam, Dufferin and St. Sampson's, Sean Campbell, Jacqueline Griffiths, Christine Mosley, Jacqueline Swain, Irene Uzzel, Betty Cotter, Mike Williams, Enid Osler, Father John Slater, Pauline, Jane Haynes. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Empower us by the gift of your holy and life-giving spirit, that we may be transformed into the likeness of Christ from glory to glory. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Hold in your embrace all who witness to your love in the service of the poor and needy, all who minister to the sick and dying, and all who bring light to those in darkness. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Merciful God, we raise before you all who have died and who are now with your son, the King. We pray for those who have recently departed, Norman Simmons, and for their re uh, resurrection into the kingdom of God, and for those whose anniversary falls at this time. From St. Paul's, Jean Coombs, Marina Budd, and from St. Dufferin and St. Samson's, Annie Plain, Georgina Gwillian, Mary Knight, Beatrice Hayes, Robert Jones, Harvey Jones, Charles Henry Fuller, Fulford, Polly Duncan, Wyndham Stevens, Augusta Reich, Gareth Peter Ir Irvins, James Bernard Dibble, Elsie Matthias, Edith Talbot, Edward Turnbull, William George Seaborn, William Edward Fowler, Clara Brady, George Henry Jones, William George Long, William Thomas Castrol Lovering, Sarah Sorathan, Deborah Lee, Deborah D. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Faithful God, we give thanks to you for all that you do in our lives. As the church year comes to an end, we commend to you all for whom we have prayed throughout the year and ask that you continue to use us and our prayers to make a difference in their lives. In a moment of quiet, we bring our own prayers to you. Dearest our Heavenly Father, for the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be might, majesty, dominion, and power, now and forever. Amen. So we come to the time of the great greeting of peace. The kingdom of God is righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Spirit. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. Let us offer one another a sign of peace. Peace be with you. Peace, peace be with you, everyone. Be with you, everyone. So we continue with the offertory hymn. Nick, thank you. Over to you and to the members of the choir.
to these segments you sing, and give your life that we might live. This is our cause, the servant king, he calls us now to follow him, to bring our lives as a daily offering. Blessed are you, o Lord, God of all creation. Through your goodness we have this bread to offer, which earth has given and human hands have made. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation. Through your goodness we have this wine to offer, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord, may the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. Eternal God, you have given your Son authority in heaven and on earth. Grant that through this Eucharist we may share in the banquet of his kingdom and serve him with joy and hope, who is alive and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And, and also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is indeed right, it is our duty, our joy and our praise that we should always sing of your glory, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, for you are the hope of the nations, the builder of the city that is to come. Your love made visible in Christ Jesus brings home the lost. 
restores the sinner and gives our dignity to the despised. In his face, your light shines out, flooding lives with goodness and truth, gathering into one in your kingdom, a divided and broken humanity. Therefore, with all who can give voice to your creation, we glorify your name forever praising you and say, Holy, 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 holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Hear us, Heavenly Father, through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord. Through him accept our sacrifice of praise and grant that by the power of your Spirit, these gifts of bread and wine may be for us his body and his blood. Who in the same night that he was betrayed took bread and gave you thanks. He broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup, and when he had given you thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Drink from this, all of you, for this is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it, in remembrance of me. Let us proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come. Therefore, Lord and Heavenly Father, remembering the saving death and resurrection of your Son, we offer you in thanksgiving this bread and this cup, your gift to us. And we thank you for counting us worthy to stand in your presence and serve you. Send your Holy Spirit upon all of us who share this one bread and this cup. Strengthen our faith, make us one, and welcome us and all your people into the glorious kingdom of your Son. Through him, with him, in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honour are yours, now and forever. Amen. Amen. As our Saviour has taught us, so we pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. We break this bread to share in the body of Christ. Though we are many, we are one, we are one body, for we all share in one bread. Lamb of God, you take away, take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. Jesus is the Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world. Happy are those who are called to his supper. Lord, I'm not, Lord, I'm not worthy to receive you, but only say the word and I shall be healed. The body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ, preserve your body and soul unto everlasting life.
So we use the act of spiritual communion. My Jesus, I believe, I believe that you are in the, in the blessed sacrament. sacrament. I, I love you above, above all things, things and, and I long for you in my soul. Since, Since I cannot now receive you sacramentally, come at me spiritually into my heart as though you have already come. I embrace you and unite myself entirely to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen.
Give thanks to the Lord for he is gracious. Stir up, O Lord, the wills of your faithful people, that they plenteously bringing forth the fruit of good works may by you be plenteously rewarded. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. So this week's uh, Sunday School work is around the sheep and the goats and the good shepherd, as, as we've heard all about this morning. Next slide, please. And, and then uh, the Christmas truck prayer draw and all the tickets as we've been talking about before Mass this morning are beginning to get out and about. As church wardens, we're asking you to sell more tickets than ever this year because we're not having the Christmas bazaars or we haven't had the summer fair. So this We've, we've lost him. <laughs> now, I'm sure we'll find him somewhere. <laughs> yes. That's lovely. Thank you. Thank you. The Lord be with you. The peace of God, which passes all understanding, Keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be amongst you and remain with you always. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. In the name of Christ. Amen. Amen. See you next week.